My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, the Gospel which we hear at today's Mass is a really beautiful one and can lead us very close to you in a personal way because it talks to us of how you heal so many people. Mark says, After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognised him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it, were healed. Even if they touched the barest tassel of your cloak, Lord, they were healed. And we see these people scurrying, running towards you, Jesus, because they're needy, because they need healing, because they need salvation. And in my prayer, Lord, right now, I'm also running towards you because I, I need healing. I need salvation. I need your strength, I need your love. In our prayer, we try to run towards Jesus. And we find, in fact, that the Lord, the Jew Jesus, you're always running towards us in the first place. Like St. John says in his first epistle, God loved us first. That's always the way. But Jesus, yes, I, I really do feel the need at a very deep level to run towards you so as to be saved you are my savior lord and in our prayer probably we don't just run ourselves towards you but we bring towards jesus all those people who we know also need his help perhaps today as you're doing your prayer here and now like i am doing mine we're mindful of particular people for whom we want to pray for whom we we would like the healing power of jesus to to reach them perhaps people who are sick or suffering in any way, people who are out of work or, or maybe have a family difficulty, people who have died recently. We entrust all these people to, to you, Jesus, with confidence, knowing that you have come to love and to save every one of us. So in our prayer, we run towards you ourselves, but we also bring others running towards you, our intentions the people we carry in our hearts. Mark concludes the section in today's Gospel by saying, They begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The amazing power of that connection with Christ. We too, we do well to have a a touching faith, a faith that touches the Lord, you know, that we can hold the crucifix in our hands. Our Catholic faith is very much about material objects too, things that remind us of the Lord, even relics, for example. It's not superstition. It's something that we can touch, that we can see, and that somehow connects us with the resurrection ultimately of our Lord. But of course, nothing compares to how Jesus touches us in the Holy Eucharist. In Holy Communion, we don't just touch the tassel of the cloak of Jesus. We receive you, Lord, and that is completely transformative. We can be very much healed through the Eucharist. A lot depends on our faith when we receive Communion. The healing power of Christ is, you could say, works also through our faith. We open the door to God's goodness through our faith. Blessed Alvaro del Portillo had a nice image from, uh, for Holy Communion. 
he remembered a particular village where he used to go on his summer holidays as a child somewhere in Spain. And in that little village, there was there were some very nice sunsets. They were particularly nice. And when the sun would go down in the evening, the whole land all around it was bathed in a beautiful, bright glow, coloured in a warm colour. And Blessed Alvaro used that as an image for how Holy Communion transforms us. We touch the body and blood of Christ. We touch the person of Jesus in Holy Communion. We don't just touch you, Lord. We receive you, Jesus. And that ultimately transforms us, heals us, raises us up. Those who touched him were healed. Well, next time I go to communion, Lord, may I be healed of those typical defects, those things that that drag me down a bit or that upset me, those things that hold me back in my path towards you. And of course, we touch Jesus also in others. And by touching Jesus in others, we very often are healed and saved ourselves. Perhaps you know, like I do, certain people who have come to know Jesus and have received his salvation because they reached out towards the poor. They maybe got involved in volunteering, caring for the sick or the dying, and they met Christ there. Or maybe they were involved in interceding, praying for particular people, and they met Christ there. Or maybe it was pro-life work, working for the unborn or working for people in poorer countries, raising money, doing a sponsored walk, giving of themselves for others, um, being close to people who are lonely, and they met Christ there. So often Pope Francis has encouraged us to um, not to be afraid to touch the wounds of Jesus. Because when we touch your wounds, in other words, when we touch you, Jesus, in the suffering of our brothers and sisters, our fellow men and women, we are healed. It's true that we can do great good to those people we reach out to and we try and help. Maybe people who are less well off than us in some, in some way. But we're the ones who end up winning. We're the ones who end up benefiting. Some years ago, there was a, a volunteer worker who was retiring from a, a youth club and he had volunteered in that youth club for many years, very generously. Uh, it was a youth club for, for disadvantaged youth and um, he had given great service over the years and naturally enough when he was uh, finally retiring there were a few a few little speeches and a few little gifts and um, tokens of appreciation for all he had done but on that occasion he said actually i have received way 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 more from my work in this youth club than i ever gave to it i have received so much more because he had received christ he had received you, Jesus, which is much more than anything he had given. It's like what St. Francis says in that wonderful prayer. It is in giving that we receive. It's in touching the wounds of Christ that we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. When he canonized John the Twenty Third and John Paul the Second back in uh, 2014, the Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis, spoke about how they were not afraid to look upon the wounds of Jesus, to touch his torn hands and his pierced side. These two great saints, two great popes, were not ashamed of the flesh of Christ. They were not scandalized by him, by his cross. They did not despise the flesh of their brother because they saw Jesus in every person who suffers and struggles. Um, they were priests and bishops and popes of the 20th century. They lived through the tragic events of that century, but they were not overwhelmed by them. Faith in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of man and the Lord of history, was stronger. The mercy of God shown by, the, by those five wounds was more powerful. And more powerful too was the closeness of Mary, our mother. Those two saints who are very attractive saints, very heroic saints, John the Twenty Third and John Paul II, they can teach us something about touching the wounds of Christ in the people around us, especially those who suffer in any way, in mind and body and spirit. And the point is that when we touch you, Jesus, in our suffering brothers and sisters, we are healed. As many as touched the tassel of your cloak were healed, says St. Mark. 
We can be healed through the intercession of Mary, our mother. We can be healed when we touch Jesus in the people around us. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.